To get an idea of what this magnetic vector potential A is, and the equations we'll be using, let's cons consider an analogy involving electric scalar potentials, also known as electric potential, potential, voltage potential, or just V, <laughs> voltage. The equation we're going to use for our analogy is Poisson's equation. You may recall Poisson's equation from a previous physics class when you were covered electrostatics. It is given here, and the operation del squared is the Laplacian operator. And since V is a scalar, it's operating on a scalar, it doesn't have a direction associated with it, then the Laplacian of V is written out as del and del V, and we get D second derivative of V with respect to X plus second derivative, partial derivative of V with respect to Y, and second partial derivative of V with respect to Z. In other words, performing the Laplacian of V is like taking the three-dimensional derivative of V or calculating a 3D slope of V at a specific location, and then taking a second derivative or a three-dimensional derivative of that slope that you just calculated. So in other words, uh, as a result, when we calculate the Laplacian of V, we can find out whether there is a source at each spatial position or not. For example, if the Laplacian of V is equal to zero, then there is no charge at that location. Or, if the Laplacian of V is equal to a number, then there exists charge at that location. And the amount of charge at that location equals the volume charge density, rho V, and then scaled by this permittivity in the denominator of the material. Or, we can go in reverse. Instead of knowing V and calculating the volume charge density, say um, say we know what the volume charge density is, then we can calculate V. We can integrate that volume charge density over the volume we're interested in, and this will give us the total voltage. Uh, note this R prime here, this is a vector that goes from the source point, from the charge density, the charge packet, to an observation point. If we take a step back and look at the equation that we have here, we can say that the electric scalar potential V is the potential energy per unit charge, or the potential energy obtained from each differential volume of charge density, rho V dV. That's written here on the bottom. Now we can complete our analogy to the magnetic vector potential which is on the right side of the screen. We can say the magnetic vector potential is the potential energy per unit per element of current, or the potential energy obtained from each differential volume of current density, J dV. So on the left-hand side of the slide, we have electric potential due to stationary charges, and on the right-hand side, we have the magnetic vector potential due to moving charges. Now there's one thing that is missing in the equations on the right hand side of this slide, if we want to apply it to antennas, there is something else we need to account for. It has to do with the fact that electromagnetic waves don't propagate at infinite speeds. That is, when we use J to calculate A, right here, to calculate A, we need to account for the reaction time, or the time it takes the electric and the magnetic fields to propagate away from the J source to an observation point. In this equation we have now, there is no time delay at all, and the fields due to J will be everywhere instantaneously. Note we don't need to account for a reaction time on this side of the screen, because Poisson's equation and this equation uh, does not, there's no time variation. This is for electrostatics. So if we want to calculate the A, vector magnetic potential, at a specific location in space, 
Due to the propagation time, the value of A is influenced by J that occurred earlier in time. And if the speed of the electromagnetic wave is UP, then the amount of time it would take for the wave to reach point R, which goes from the source to the observation point, would be R prime over UP. We'll say that's the propagation time. In other words, the J that we want to use in the expression for A is not J R vector that gives us a position and T, but rather we want to use J R position T minus R prime over UP, which is from here. This gives us the proper time delay for the J that occurred earlier in time is going to influence our A. Now when electromagnetic problems are solved analytically, they are almost always solved in the phasor domain in order to simplify the calculation. So let's assume J varies sinusoidally, then we can write it in phasor form uh, here. If we convert this to phasor form, then we would have, it's equal to the real part of J R times e to the j omega t. And then that means if we convert this to phasor form, then this would be the real part of j r, and this would be a j vector phasor for both of these, e to the j omega t minus r prime over up. In other words, what this means is that the time delay turns into a phase delay. So here, e to the j omega t, e to the minus j omega r prime over up, here's our additional phase delay due to the propagation time. And since we can relate k to the propagation speed, and omega, we have omega over up is equal to k. That means that what we get for this expression here is e to the minus j k r prime. So here's omega and up, so I substituted in k. So in phasor form, we can multiply the current density by this term in order to account for the time it takes the fields to propagate from the source, the current density, to the observation point. So what does our equation for A look like now? Well, we're going to take what we had before, which is copied here, and all we're going to do is we're going to multiply by e to the minus j k r prime in order to take into account the time delay. So uh, this is vector phasor, a vector phasor, mu naught over 4 pi j vector phasor, I forgot the phasor there again, e to the minus j k r prime dv over r prime. So basically what we have here is a way to complete step one of path two. We have some current density, some known current density, and we can use that to calculate A. Then, once we've completed step one, we can use A to calculate the electric and magnetic field. So for step two, we're going to calculate the H field is one over mu naught, and the expression we can use is the curl of A vector phasor, and then once we have the magnetic field, we can calculate E vector phasor, 1 over J omega epsilon is a curl of H. This is just Ampere's law. Get out your in-class project notebook and write down these three equations, this one and these two, and these are the equations that we'll be solving in order to follow path two 
and to predict the electric magnetic fields radiated by our antenna inside the human body.